the next part of this chapter deals with what are called Gantt charts, not Grant charts, as one student used to call them, Gantt charts. So it's about putting this information into a chart, which is then easy to use when you're in terms of um, trying to schedule an activity, it's like assign workers to one. Okay, so this is dead easy. In the Grant Gantt chart, in the Gantt chart, the first thing you would do is on the top row, put your critical path. So I need to find the critical path first. Well, 16 take 2 is 14. 14 take 2, no. 14 take 2, 12. 12 take 3 is 9. 9 take 5 is 4. 4 take 4 is 0. So top row would be, go all the way across to 16. Now notice how it go, the boxes go up to um, 18. That's because you in the exam you'd have to fill this in and you might make it up and you might end up going up to 18. But if your chart only went up to 16, it would give the game away a little bit. Alright, so um, 0 to 4, and we'll put on A. From 4 to 9 is C. It's 9 to 12 is B. 12 to 14 is F. 14 to 16 is H. So along the top row of the Gantt chart is your critical path. Now, if there was more than one critical path, we might have some spare critical activities. You'd put all of those on the second row. But there are none in this question. So what we then need to do in alphabetical order, put in the remaining activities. So what I would suggest you do here is write down the remaining activities. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Is there an I? No. So I need to do B, D and G. I mean, on something like this I didn't really need to do it, but on a more complicated question with more activities on a bigger chart it's helpful. So I can then take the information to B3, D2, G, 3, and then either side put the early time, late time. It saves keep looking back at this chart all the time. Find on this one, more difficult than a big one. So B, 4 to 12, and then you go top to bottom. Uh, D, 7 to 14, and G, 9 to 16. So then I'm going to put this one on the second row, this one on the third row, this one on the fourth row. Do it in alphabetical order because that's what will be in the ACE in the mark scheme. So for B, I need to go from 4 to 12. 4 to 12. B takes three blocks. The rest you shade off, and that is its float. So B can slide anywhere between here and here, and that's what you'd effectively have to do when you're trying to schedule the activities. D, 7 to 14. takes two blocks, D2, shade off the rest, G, 9 to 16, takes three blocks, and I should say if this represented days, this would be day one, so when you talk about day one, you're talking about this block here. So you look at the end numbers. So this is day two, day three, day four, and so on and so forth. So C can only start after day four. So effectively you start it on day five, but it can get confusing. All right, let's look at the next example. This is um, a complete one. We need to fill in the activity network, draw the Gantt chart. Okay, so zero, four, Fourteen, eleven, fourteen. So nineteen B twenty twenty ones. This one got three into this one. We've got nineteen, nineteen, twenty one, twenty six, twenty four, twenty six. Okay, let's work out pack or packs. Number of rows. 
because it's pretty ominous. ominous. 26 tech 5 is 21. 21 tech 7 is 14. 14 tech 10 is 4. 4 tech 4 is 0. Unfortunately, I think that's easy. Yeah, it's cool. So that would be the top row. And I need to do the black scan to mop up all the rest. There's quite a few to do here. So 26 tech 4 is 22. 22 tech 9 is 13. 21 tech 8 is 13. So it's quite forgiving that one because it's sad for both. 22 tech 5 is 17. 13 tech 2 is 11. 11 tech 3 is 8. 17 tech 9. Uh, 8 is 9. So 11 tech 3 is 8. So, first thing we need to do then is see how many rows we've got. Uh, well, let's just start off by doing the critical path first. So, we've got to get all the way to 26. It's a critical path, then to block it off. So, 4. 14, 21, 26. And then we're going to write down all the letters in alphabetical order that aren't in a critical path. So I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. M is an N, what's the race? So we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm not lucky, so I can leave a gap in between them. It's just because it's quite narrow, so I didn't want to put them touching. So if we just find these then, B6 and go 0, 8. BD is 5, goes 4 to 11. Six to eleven. F four to twenty one fifteen. G two nine to thirteen. Provided you don't make any transcription as it's a good investment of time is H eight six to seventeen. You need to do it if you have to do scheduling anyway. J eight. Do B because the B goes from 0 to 8. Take 6. I'm going to block off 2, it's got 32. D, 4 to 11. Six to eleven. Take three blocks. It's going to float to two. F is four to twenty one. And walk us to twenty one. So 4 to 21 is 17, it takes 15 and we have two float. Rather than counting 15 blocks, then we'll move a bit quicker. G, 9 to 13. Next two. H, 6 to 17. Eight and we'll start with some eleven, so we're going to three float. J eleven to twenty one. Um, eleven to twenty one is ten, takes eight, so we've got two floats. K 
Kai on the Sunday Boss 22. I've got a Lazarus Sunday Boss 2 float. L14 22. Lastly, and twenty to twenty six. There you go, there you got the gun shot. It does take quite a long time for it to ease the marks of the exam. Um, just make sure you don't make any mistakes. Sometimes it helps to have a rule going sideways so you don't make any stupid mistakes. So, Next thing I'm going to show you is how to use a Gantt chart. So this is actually a neater version of the one I just drew. You need to be careful of literacy here. I've got the words may, must. So which activity may be happening midday on day six? So midday on day six would be here. So before the six. So in the block. So there's five, six. Now, what you need to do, if it's maybe happening, is see whether or not the activity can escape and shift into the float. Um, it's not a very clear diagram, actually. I might use this one. This one's actually a bit better. Not the least, but I've got the squares on this one. So, which activities may be happening on day six? I'll just go before the six, halfway between five and six. Okay, so C may be happening. Uh, B may be happening. Uh, D may be happening. And F may be happening. Which activities must be happening on day six? Now, can they escape? Well, it doesn't matter what you do with B. So, say if you push B to here, it's still going to pass through that line. So C must happen, B must happen. If it's critical, it's, you have no choice. You have no way of moving it. What about D then? See, for D, I could actually start D here and go two blocks into the float and use a ball of float. And you can see how D can escape. So it just escapes that line. So D, uh, D, D's not must be happening, it may be happening. F as well. See, if I start it two days later, going into the two days of float, you can escape that line. So it's just C and B must be happening. What's the minimum number of workers required to complete the project in 26 days? So like the lower bound. Right, what we want to do here is draw a line similar to this that traps as many activities as possible. A little tip for you, go just before you've got a group of floats. Because if you do before the float, you've got less chance of escape. So let's try midday on day nine. So we've got one, C, D, can D escape? No, um, oh, where did D originally end? I think D originally ended there. So D can't escape. So we've got on day nine, you've got D, uh, C, D. These are the ones that must be happening. E, E can't escape either. H, can H escape? One, two, three, H can just escape. So on day nine, you need three workers. Because you've got those three events must happen. Those three activities, sorry, must happen on day nine. So is there anywhere else that's going to get more than that? What about here? Day 19. So day 19, you've got I, F can't escape, J can't escape. K can't escape, L can't escape, we've got five workers. Now, don't think for a second I'll be able to beat that. So the minimum number of workers in order to complete it with the critical term is five. Because you've got those five jobs. Assuming that each worker needs one worker, each activity needs one worker, and you can't stop. You can't stop the activity, then come back to it later, you must do it all in one go. Then you could end activities I, F, J, K and L all must be taking place on day 19. So you're going to need five workers. Now you can get situations, um, 
Can I do an example of it here? So I'll just say, for example, I've only ever seen this in an example once. So say you did day nine three workers and day 14 was also three workers. It is actually, it's four, but never mind. Let's just say, for example, it was five actually. I think it's five as well. But let's say, for example, it was three. I spoke to these two lines of trapping three activities. But it might be the case that in order for this one to be three, you've pushed one over and now goes into this one, whereas it wouldn't before. So say this had a bit more float. But in order to skip this line, you've pushed it all the way into the float, so now it goes over to this line. So, okay, it's three here, three here. But if it's three here, it has to be four here. Or if it's three here, it has to be four there. So, um, you, I've only ever seen that happen once, though. Just be aware, it could, could be asked. Anyway, it's five workers. Okay, if you can have a go now, exercises eight F and eight G. She's about drawing Gantt charts and using Gantt charts. 8F is drawing them, 8G is using them. 